Hello and welcome to lesson number 14. For our third demo, uh, we'll have a look at a content slider, but we're not going to limit ourselves to just images as slides. Instead, uh, our slider can uh, really take on any kind of slide, text, HTML, whatever uh, we can throw at it. Now, uh, I'm going to show you the slide. It's the finished one. Uh, we just have some quotes here. We have the next button, the previous button, and we can cycle through them like this. When we are at the beginning, the back button doesn't work. And when we get to the end, the forward button doesn't work. So instead of um, wasting a lot of time writing this code, essentially you can just open the source files that come with the course and then just copy the code from there. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the code. I'm going to explain why I did what I did and what's the purpose of each function and of each piece of code. So first things first, let's uh, have a look at the markup here to understand what's going on. So we have a container that has a slider container UL with an ID of slider and each slide is basically a list item with a class of slide. So we start by defining a couple of variables. We're getting the slides and we're getting the slider itself. We're setting the cursor to zero. Now the cursor is going to serve as a guide so that we know on which slide we are. We're also defining slide width, a top height. Top height will be used to find uh, the height of the tallest slide. Slide count, of course, gives us the number of slides. Now, if we have slides, this is a check that we have to do, then we're getting the slide width. Now, why are we doing that? Because the way we're going to organize things is we're going to have the slides positioned absolutely and we're just going to offset them by their height. So the, um, the slide that's currently being viewed is going to be at left zero but the slide before it is going to be um, is going to have the value left minus the slide width the slide before that the same way and the slides after the current one are going to have uh, left uh, the left value equal to plus the slide width so let me actually show you that right here if we take a look at the inspector you're going to see that our slides have a style set look this first one 4995 pixels and then we decrement like this until we get to zero which is the current slide but if i'm gonna hit back watch what happens with the left values now this slide is the current one its left is at zero and the one that was before is at left 999. We do back again. You'll notice that the value of the left property changes. So how are we achieving that? Well, we're setting the left value for each slide here. So we're doing a loop and then on each slide we're setting its width times this counter plus pixel. So if each slide's width is 1000 pixels, then um, the first slide is going to be uh, 1000 times zero because the cursor is at zero. So that will be zero. The next one is going to be at 1000, the next one at 2000, and so on. Then we calculate the tallest slide. And calculate tallest slide is a function that basically runs through all of our slides and it checks if the offset height of each slide is higher than the top height or the current top height, then we're setting the top height to the height of that slide. And then what we're doing is we're setting the height of the entire slider to that top height. Uh, and we're doing this to ensure that all the slides are centered vertically. And of course, to do that, we need to know the biggest slide. Next, we're going to add the animated class to each slide. And 
the animated class will basically allow for that smooth slide. Well, <laughs> slide is probably not, uh, not a good uh, term here, but uh, the transition, right? So changing its left from 0 to minus 1000, for example, is made with a transition. Now, why aren't we adding this from the beginning? Well, if we did, uh, when we refresh the page, all of the slides would just go flying on the screen because they would have that animated class. So instead, we're adding after all of the elements have loaded. Then we're adding event listeners for next and previous buttons. And we're checking if the cursor is smaller than the slide count minus one, which means if we haven't reached the end, we move the slides forward and we increase the cursor. Same thing for this bit, only in reverse. Now move slides will take the direction, so it's either forwards or backwards. And what it's going to do is it will redo those uh, left values, right? So uh, the left values, as you saw when I showed you the, um, the inspector, when you're moving a slide, all of those values change. Let me show you again. So when I hit the next button, notice this slide here. We're going to the second one. So the first one gets a left of minus 999, second one is zero, next one is plus 999, and so on. And that's what this code here is doing, basically. The uh, replace that you see here basically has the role of uh, stripping the value uh, from the px characters. It's always doing. And then we're adding slide width, and then we're adding pixels again, so that uh, it's compatible with this left property here. Finally, we're adding an event listener for resize because when we resize our page, the width of our slides will change because it's responsive. So that means the left values will be rendered useless. We have to calculate new ones. And that's what we're doing here basically, is we're recalculating those left values and the tallest slide. And that's it really. Uh, it's a very simple method of creating a slider and a responsive one at that. Uh, it doesn't have any touch enabled features like when you're on a smartphone and you swipe, it's going to change slide. It doesn't have that. Instead, it, it just uses these two buttons. Now, our fourth demo will be a image slider. Again, a very popular uh, JavaScript uh, pattern uh, that's being used in a lot of, uh, in a lot of web pages. So we're going to create that in the next lesson.